Hello. This is Elise. Don't eat the mic so much. It just looks like a cookie. <laughs> when? Yum. It just looks like a cookie. Thou, view, thou, view, thou, view, thou, view. Vow to view, vow, 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 vow to view. Vow to view each other's movies, even though we don't always like them, but it's okay because we love each other and movies too. Hey there, everyone. We missed you last week, but welcome to Vow to View, your daily planet podcast all about marriage and the things we make each other watch. My name is Elise Daly. And I'm Scott Daly. And together, we're, we're the, the Dailies. Dailies. Elise. Yeah. We're back. We are. We took a whole week off. Back again. Shady's back. Tell a friend. <laughs> we took what is a white wrapper and we made it even more white. That's it's it's, it's like an what we're supposed to do. It's our life's goal. Yeah, we took a, we were off last week. I hope everyone had a good Fourth of July break. Unless we you're, definitely did. Unless you're not an American, in which case I hope you had a, in a which good case normal. We week. wish we were you. Yeah, eh. it's true. We Happy were, Canadian Day, Bastille Days this week. You it know is. what? I love Bastille Day, July the fourteenth. It's a great day. <laughs> We've got some stuff to do this week. We've got some, th- some things to talk about because this is the show where each week you and I pick a movie and make the other person watch it. And then we talk about the movies. We talk about us, talk about our lives, and we just have some fun. Can we just talk about fun. fireworks really quick? Can we? Because the best fireworks I ever saw were actually on Bastille Day in France. Okay, well, maybe we do that in the Rose and the Thorn section. Okay, sorry, continue. Um, Elise. Yeah. We've got two movies today chosen by you. We do. Both of them are chosen. Why? Yeah. Why are both movies chosen by you, Elise? Because it's my birthday it week. It is. Not only today is actually my birthday. Not only is it your birthday week, but today is the day of your birth. You are 29 years old. Yeah, 29 years, years ago, this is it. my mother was giving birth to me. This is it. This is the last day. This is the last year of your 20s. It is. It's okay. You've got, you got 365 you know, days in the 20s, and then it's gone forever. I think the 30s are the women's prime. You know, I think that for men, it's their late teens, 20s. But Fuck. for women, it's our 30s. Fuck. I know. I messed up. It's okay. You met me in your 20s. No, yeah, you met me in your 20s. I was it was your late 20s. Yeah, I was 29. But you found me when the last time that you could. Oh, hey, you met me whenever I was this age. Yeah, it's time. That's weird. It's a flat circle. Hmm. All right, Elise. Yeah. Um, so we're going to talk about what, what are the two movies we're talking about this week? Romancing the Stone. And High School Musical. Yeah, those are two very different movies. I know, that's why I wanted to choose two things that were different. And they're two movies that I haven't seen. So both of your movies this week, you got to pick both movies, and you picked two movies that I had never seen before. I know, I kind of wanted to make sure it's you It's almost as if that them. was intentional. It was. So we're going to talk about that. Very we're going to talk about some roses and some thorns. Mm-hmm. But first. First, we're going to talk about a boring show. What are we going to talk about first, Elise? The Bachelorette. <laughs> Barf, as you would like to say. <laughs> so it's actually been two weeks since we've talked about The Bachelorette. And so this past week was absolutely boring. And you know, okay, so here's the, here's the deal. At least they're all boring, babe. No, but here's the deal. You know that a week is boring Whenever they actually show the footage of the bachelor or bachelorette talking with Chris Harrison, because Chris Harrison does absolutely nothing. There's no purpose to having him on the show. You've actually pointed out how ridiculous it is. Here's that a, the the here's only a, thing that he does whenever it's like a season that actually has juicy drama is during the rose ceremonies. He comes out, and I'll let you tell this because you laugh every single time. Because he, he comes out. And the camera cuts to the single rose on yes. the little tablet. And he comes out and he says, all right, everyone, this is the final rose for tonight. Mm-hmm. Um, if you are not selected, you must leave immediately. Which, like, are all things that everyone on the show and 
watching the show knows. Yeah. I mean, all you have to do is cut to there being one rose and he go so he appears, does that, and then leaves. Yeah. And then he comes back after the final rose has been given, just to reiterate the fact that, okay, gentlemen, you um you must leave now. And this man makes millions of dollars a year doing this. That's it. That's all he does. That's all he does. That's that's it. Yeah. It's kind of like how Vanna White doesn't actually turn the the letters she on Wheel of Fortune to, anymore. But then, yeah, they stop. It's just it's all automated like, and she does nothing. Yeah, he used but to she do stuff with lots like of date money. cards and things like that. And then they stopped doing it's as much information like, about it. And look, I will make fun of Chris Harrison all day for this, but... Good for you, dude. I mean, you don't have to do shit and mm-hmm. everyone keeps giving you money. That's the American dream. Mm-hmm. Everyone wants to get money for doing nothing. He, he does more he, during Bachelor in Paradise, he did I feel like. No, no, he doesn't. He greets everybody as they come in. Yeah. OK. That's and that's the only other thing really that he fucking does. hard. Hello. Uh-huh. Welcome. Are you excited about the no, last time that debauchery? we saw you and he always talks and he puts his fingertips together like this. When we saw you last, we were, you know, heartbroken with you because she sent you home. And then he, he goes. He sent you home. And then he goes. How do you think this um, is going to be different this time yeah. around? He, go, he, he asks really super, really intellectual, smart questions like, how are you feeling about this decision? And the bachelor or bachelorette's response is, this is just, this is just so much harder than I thought it was going to be. Which is a dumb thing to say because they've all been on the show before and they mm-hmm. know exactly how it works. But they just don't understand how you can fall in love with multiple people at the same time. I, which I really don't either. I'm get, I'm taking over your section. I'm sorry. That's fine. You you normally do it anyways, but that's okay. Continue. Oh, whoa. I'm just kidding. I, I, I realized something this week. What did you realize? I realized that the reason... Like, I, I have... In, in entire time knowing you and watching this show, mm-hmm. I've been looking at the show like I don't understand these people. I don't understand how you can fall in love this quickly and be in love with multiple people and all this bullshit. And I call yeah. it all bullshit. Yeah. I realized this week that the reason this happens is because the show and these producers create like a perfect storm. They make a movie. Yeah. Oh, yeah. They make a movie. And so like. Are these people bullshitting? No, I think they really do feel like they're falling in love. I don't. I don't. It's a false sense. I don't think they are. But if you, if you like, th- there was a moment in in this episode where like she had this really romantic date with this guy, and then they like went like they took off their clothes, and of course they were already wearing ba- bathing suits underneath because mm-hmm. they were told they were going to do this in yeah. advance. Um, but they took off their clothes, and then they went like running into the into the ocean and like the moon is up there like with perfect moonlight cascading down yeah. upon them and it's like w- what they've done is th- they've created this false like movie picturesque romance situation so where of course yeah. it's gonna feel like you of course it's gonna feel like you're falling in love with the person when everything around you when the entire world is turning based on your relationship like the, like everyone's doing stuff for you like you're special no matter where you go you're doing all these really like designed to be romantic picturesque dates of course you're gonna feel like you're falling in love i I still don't believe it's actually real i believe that the relationships that have worked from the show have worked because after they did the whole show they actually spent some time um really learning who each other was in a normal situation and so yeah i mean I still hate the show. So I think what the show does, sorry, I interrupted you. You still hate the show. So what the show does is like what you're saying, they put you into situations where you are highly emotional. Yeah. Because when your emotions are turned like a hundred percent up, then that is what's going to create a sense of you have to rely on someone else. And the only people that you can rely on are these people that are in the same setting as you. And so that's why, it quote unquote works is because you're put into these stressful situations where you're not given enough sleep. You're traveling all the time. You're on these like extreme dates that you normally wouldn't have in the real world. Yeah. And 
you're just at such a point of like stress for your body. You just need to relax. And so the only way to relax is by trying to pretend to be just normal with another person. And so that's why the dates and the system quote unquote work for the two and a half months. And then it's like what it exactly what you said is the relationships that work are those that afterwards they really take the time to pull away from the system and just kind of go just set themselves into like yeah a, a place where no one else is around and i but, think that it's also the ones that they don't watch the show they don't pay attention to any of the tabloids or anything and then they just kind of focus on each other and they realize like what was on the show that they're in a state of highly emotional territory and the only way that we're going to get through this is to rely on each other so we're not going to watch it we're going to be completely honest with each other about what we did in the other relationships that we're forming throughout the season and they move forward and those are those are the ones that work those are yeah. the Catherine and Sean the Jojo and Jordan the but it, it's this it's this completely f- like artificial Officially, like it's Ted Mosby and Victoria at the wedding yeah. and how I met your mother. It's before sunrise. Um, it's the, it's this this yeah constructed scenario in which like yeah you're put in this this thing that is so different from normal life and is so foreign to you that yeah, yeah you naturally gravitate towards the people like it's it's kind of like. In a weird way, it's like a a, a survival romance. You know how like, yeah. like sometimes people in like really like really stressful situations, people bond with each other. Like the the people on the the plane that crashed in the Hudson River mm-hmm. that all survived. Like the, all those people became friends yeah. because like you're, you're you're put into that heightened emotional state to yeah. where it's just like you've had an experience that you've all been through yeah. together, and those are the only people that understand it. And I think this realization. Um, actually has made me like the show less because I think it makes it more evil <laughs> and more dangerous because you're kind of like specifically toying with real people's emotions to a point where they make a decision that is real and big and with lasting consequences yeah. in a time where they probably shouldn't make that decision. Um, I, I don't. I don't think like I don't think a person having just been like kidnapped like like Stockholm syndrome. I don't think a person having just been kidnapped should in the middle of that kidnapping say, "Yeah, I want to marry you, kidnapper." Well, it's not a perfect metaphor, but you'd get what I mean. Yeah. We've been talking about this too long. I'm t- I took over your whole thing. Yeah, that's okay. What else did you have to say real quick? Um Let's talk so- about the virgin thing. Let's just talk about <sighs> the virgin thing real quick cuz that's something that pisses me off too. Okay, so this past week they had a date in the Bahamas, and previous to this, um, Colton, one of the contestants, went on a date with her in Vegas, and Uh we found out that he was a virgin, and then they had another date one-on-one in the Bahamas because this week they had three one-on-ones and then one three-on-one date. So three people went and only one person got the rose, but Colton went on the date, and he had not told her that he was a virgin before, and... They made this big, huge deal about it. And it was just like every single thing revolved around that. And then they went conch diving. And the guy in the Bahamas was talking about how you like pull this little thing out from the conch and you eat it. And it's like the Bahamian Viagra for men. Yeah. And it was just like, I understand that they're trying to have some sort of storylines on the show because there's absolutely no drama (laughs) it is the most boring thing ever and i think that they are seriously regretting the decision that they had to choose her for the bachelorette because she is boring she is not interesting in the slightest and the only reason that i'm continuing to watch the show is to see who the bachelor will be and i'm hoping actually that is hashtag team wills but i don't think that they're going to do that because he's going to be on bachelor in paradise and to have him be on the Bachelor, Bachelor in Paradise. I'm sorry, The Bachelorette, Bachelor in Paradise, and then be The Bachelor, I just think is too much all in one. But um, that's really the only reason that I'm I'm watching it right now. And that's really... I, the, it's kind of disappointing. But anyways, so back to that. It was just the whole thing with Colton. And it was it's just, it's like, 
whenever he told her that she had a horrible reaction. It's like he tells her that and he explains it completely. And then she just walks away like, I'm sorry. It's just it's not that big of a deal. I, I don't. I, In my, It's just not that big of a deal. I think the show edited that to make it seem like she just got up and walked away. I, I, I don't so. I don't think that's really. Yes. Um, this is something the show has done before. This this ex person is a virgin. And oh, my well, God, yeah, what does Sean that mean? And then Ashley. Look, this is dumb. We're adults like some people are virgins and some people aren't. It's not that big of a deal. Um. So I, I don't I, I think it's really irresponsible for a show to do something like this, to make it in this this big dramatic thing like like he's sitting there like, is she going to break up with me because I'm a virgin? Look, if she does that, fuck her. Like it, it doesn't it doesn't matter. We're not teenagers anymore. No. Like if you if you have had sex before. Cool. Um, if you haven't yet. That's fine. And they don't respect you enough to be like, okay, well, that's yeah. fine. And I love you anyway, or I'm still interested in getting to know you. And that's not that big of a deal. Because right. It's, but to yeah. me, to me, it's like, regard her reaction set aside, the show constructed this storyline. So it is the show disrespecting that man, like that man and his, either his decision or just that's the way things, well, that's yeah. the way the cookie then, crumbled. Like it, it's... It's making it a big deal in a, in a very irresponsible way. Like your s- sexual decisions, what you want to and not want to do sexually is your own damn business. And yes, that's a conversation you need to have with the person um, you're seeing. Uh, but to to construct drama around that reveal is so childish. I know. And I will say every single time there is someone on the show who has not slept with anyone before they always make it a point and i can name yeah. sean lowe had not or he had but he was a quote-unquote born again virgin. you want to know why because it's the reason they're cast because yeah. they, they say that in an yeah, interview or in their video and they're like oh we'll do the virgin plot line mm-hmm. again and it's just it's just and then i absolutely gross. hated it was just like the whole thing that they did with the ashley girl and it was like yeah they completely repeated the fact that she had done that and then they kept her coming on the shows until she lost her virginity on a show like that is sickening to me right that is absolutely disgusting the, the only reason you're casting her is continually put that in the forefront until you f- pressure her enough in order to do that and i think that that's wrong it is and yeah. you know what if he wanted to have that storyline then whatever but the fact that he kept on saying like only a handful of people know this it's a conversation i know that i need to have but his producer the one that is like taking care of him the whole time is the one that keeps telling him to do this yeah, and the one course. that's like you need to tell her i think you need to definitely tell her before hometowns because if you do that and then it's the overnight dates and she doesn't know like think about what's gonna happen and it's just sick it really is why do we watch the show i don't like the show because I, I like to know who's on bachelor in paradise <laughs> and i like to know who the next one is All right, for we the show. have been talking about this for like 10 minutes now we've gone oh, way over last thing i want to say is that i'm so glad lincoln is gone i think didn't I touch on it earlier that Lincoln was the one that was charged with sexual assault? Yeah, good. fuck that guy. So He's the week gone. before he was gone, and so the the weird thing about with him going, oh yeah, this was this was last week, but yeah, she sent two people home, and normally each one of them get to like an exit um, package. They get, yeah, they get yeah. to like sit and have an exit interview. They didn't do that with him. Mm-hmm. Um, they probably recorded it, but I think in the wake of all this yeah. bullshit about him being a terrible human being came out, they elected not to do that and i think i, he I was probably that also in talks to be on bachelor in paradise but after that they luckily hadn't filmed any of it yet and Good. so he didn't yeah. get to be on Fuck it that but guy. i'm really excited that wills is on it um i was really sad to see leo go i loved fabio um <laughs> fabio sorry but so now our four that are left are colton the show's proclaimed virgin, Garrett, the one who got in trouble for Instagram, Blake, the first one to tell her that he loves her, and Wilson from Seventh Heaven, who I can't remember his actual name. All these four guys look exactly the same. I cannot yeah. tell them apart at all. They are so boring and bland looking. They are. They're all I, boring. I successfully guessed the winner because 
here's here's what I've realized. If you really want to know who the winner is, just go to realitysteve.com. Yeah. And Reality Steve, if you're listening to this, oh my gosh. He's not. He's not. But what if he is? Here's what I realized about the show. Um, and the reason I guess the winner, I think the show shoots the interactions between who she ends up with um, or edits around it, at least. Differently. Towards the end. Yeah, they do. I, I, and that's how I guess I could, I could look at how they were editing, how they were cutting the conversation between these two people. And I was like, that's he's the one who wins. Like, I can tell there's they're, they're planting the seeds for yeah. this already. Um, yeah, the, show, right. the show's bad. We talked about it way too long. Let's move on to Rose and Thorn. Yeah, because I forgot the song. Sing it. Every rose has its thorn. You never do it in the right key. I forgot how the song went too. <laughs> okay, but something along um, those lines. At least tell me your rose. We got to go quick because. Um. We're so my rose this week time. was hooray! It was my birthday, and it was so exciting. There were so many fun things, but one of the most fun things was when we were in DC last week. My like all time favorite bakery, who we that we do not have here, which is Milk Bar, Christina Tosi. I like absolutely adore. I went to like one of her baking demo classes years ago before she got to be like, this big, huge thing. And so is now on you're Chef's hipster table. Now. You liked her yeah, before I'm a she hipster was cool. Cook. Um, but I'd always wanted to try her actual like cake, the birthday cake that made her who she was like at least uh -huh. bakery wise. And last time we went to New York in January for our anniversary, we were going to get one for an anniversary cake and we didn't order they were it out and enough. we hadn't ordered it. And so uh, my sisters were like, hey, let's do like a birthday cake, little something, whatever you want. And I was like, Milk Bar. I want to have the birthday cake from Milk Bar. And so I got to have the birthday cake from Milk Bar. And no. I was so excited. <laughs> and Scott's going to like talk about how ridiculous I was with a cake because we were on the plane ride home and I was protective of it like it was a child. And yeah, yeah, so I got I, really irritated at him. We got we to gotta, we gotta rewind a little I've bit I've never here. had the cake before. I was so excited. And I just wanted to make it home so that I could have it. It was the most delicious thing ever. And I want to order one for every birthday from here on out and have it at my house. It was fantastic. If you live close to a milk bar bakery you definitely need to get one and if you love me lots and want to send me one i would not be opposed to that so the important part of this whole thing is the part where you just mentioned that you took the cake on an airplane yeah which is true i did so we there was about a third of the cake left after everyone had their bits like three fourths of it there was a lot left i don't think it was three fourths it was a lot left. Um, it was three large slices <laughs> so elise puts the cake in a piece of Tupperware. So mm -hmm. now we have her sister's Tupperware at our house and brings the cake um, to the airport and the cake goes through security. The cake yeah. got x-rayed um, and we took the cake. And of course, everyone that sees Elise carrying a cake is like, oh, cake. They're like, oh my gosh, I want that cake. It looks so good. But so... I'm like, no, you can't have my cake. It's my birthday cake. Yeah, Elise was... Elise loves this cake more than me. No, um, I love it like almost as much as you. So there was a point where like you were sitting next to me or standing next to me and I like I bumped you or like I looked at the cake. Okay, no, here's what you did. Here's what you did. Let me tell oh, you. I what opened you did. the air hole on you the top of the cake. You opened the air hole, but okay, so you opened the air hole on the plane and it vibrated the thing and it started to make the little crumbles on the side go down because the icing was melting from the top and i was like scott you can't do that stop it it's making the things fall and i got irritated at you yeah. and i will i will admit that i got irritated at you and then you did it again Elise? later so that was the thing it was not that you had done it Elise? it was not that you did that outside Elise? it was that you did it after i said scott don't do that at least it's cake but it's, it's my birthday cake. You already had a slice, though. It's old cake. But you like old cake. I do, but that's me. But I wanted to make it back, like, all intact. That was my goal. Who cares if it touches the side of the Tupperware? I do. Why? Because I do. Doesn't make but we've been sense. on my rose for long enough, yeah. Scott. So what was your rose for this well, week? Well, my rose, believe it or not, was that DC trip where you loved me more, loved me less than a cake. <laughs> um, yeah, so it was a good trip. Like we said, we went to DC. I got to hang out with Elise's family all week, basically. Um, it was the first time all of us have been together, mm -hmm. probably since like I think our wedding was the first time everyone was together. Um, 
I mean, we'd had holidays since then, like Christmas. Yeah, I, I guess so. I guess so. Um, but it was the first vacation we all went on together, and it was, it was a lot the of fun. Very first vacation. It was a lot of fun. I really had, enjoyed yeah. it. We. Uh, it was the first vacation my family had gone on since I was in high school. <laughs> so it's been like yeah. well over ten years. We went to a Nats game. Um, we're gonna. We had a experience oh, at Shake Shack my throne, that we're Lord. we're never gonna talk about again. No, I don't even want you to do that because you're you'll get too upset. You'll get too upset. I, I no. It's okay. I'm um, over it. We met uh, a listener. We met Kevin, one of we our, did. our hey, patrons. Kev. Uh, he lives out in D.C. and he came into the city and we hung out for a few hours. That was um, fun. It was a lot of fun. It was cool getting. It's it's like a it's like a weird experience, you know. Like I mean, not weird in a bad way, but like I started this thing. Matt and I started this thing, and it was like um, internet dating. I told you that all over. It was again. Not it was like, like oh my gosh, who are you? Not like you know. One time dating. I told you that whenever I was like on all those apps or whatever, one of the people that I met, it was right around Halloween. And he was dressed up as Abraham Lincoln. Did I ever tell you that? You did. You yeah. did. Kevin, thank you for not dressing up like Abraham Lincoln. Yeah, thank, thank you so much. Or Uncle Sam. But it was cool because, like, um, I started this thing because I wanted to, like, start conversations with people out there in the world, you know, yeah. about things. Um, and so, like, I got to meet someone who likes what we do enough to listen to it and, and not only to listen to it, but to contribute to it, to help us, to help us grow and build and stuff. So it was cool getting to meet a person like that. We might get to meet another person. Um, there's someone else that's going to be in Vail next week while we're in Vail. So we might meet another listener, um, Hooray, which is Colorado. just a really, it's a really cool thing. So that, uh, that trip was great. Um, I burned my head. Uh, yeah, we, were sitting, we were sitting by a pool and, and I did not put a uh, suntan lotion on my bald head and uh, okay. it burned. And now it's peeling. It looks like I have just really bad dandruff. And I have to be like, when people look at me, I have to be like, no, no, uh, it's it's just dying skin from the cancer, um, not 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 from just normal cancer. dandruff from the skin cancer. Uh, so that's my that's rose. Funny. It yeah. was great. I loved it a lot. Good. Let's go to the bed. Yeah. What, Elise, is your thorn? So um, I've been doing a lot of cooking because... During our whole thirty that we were just on, mm-hmm. uh, that's the thorn. The whole thirty. No, I agree. I actually really enjoyed the whole thirty, but um, on Monday I was cooking some wings because I realized, oh my gosh, I've got this really good recipe to cook They're chicken delicious. wings, and I love them. Delicious. Um, but whenever I was doing it, and I pulled the pan out of the oven. I didn't have my hand in the oven mitt, and I was just trying to like move it really quickly. So the way that I grabbed it and then did the pan, my thumb slipped in between the like hand part of the mitt and where the thumb is Mm -hmm. and grabbed onto the pan that had been in the oven for 25 minutes on 425 degrees. It's a long way to say you burned your finger. I burned my thumb and I have never remembered a burn this bad. It hurt so horribly. Did it? Did it burn? It burned. It burned so, so bad. I put it under water. I put a wet rag on it. I put ice in the in the rag, which evidently is not something that you're supposed to do. Um, I was just trying to... And I had to keep it covered for like... From the time that I burned it, which was around like 6 o'clock until I went to bed at like 10 something. It was... It was painful. Oh, boy. Um. Yeah, I mean, it, it's fine now. It's recovering, but man, it was painful. I, I almost cried. It was so bad. I just, I wanted it to stop burning, and it wouldn't stop burning. You know how um, you called me out when two of my thorns in a row were politics? Mm-hmm. It's now like two of your thorns in a row that are gross body things going on with you. I had a pimple. Yeah. And now I burned myself. Yeah. But that's different. Just getting a little one note, Elias, that's all. Maybe talk about politics. Talk about the Supreme Court justices. Mix it up. I'm getting a very um, nasty look right now. I'm not going to mix it up. I'm just going to be honest. I'm not going to try and conform to what you want me to. Okay. But what was your thorn, Scott? What was so bad for you? My thorn, the worst thing that happened, uh... I was not going to do the show last week, actually. Oh, you love it. I do. You love like, me. Uh, of course I do. <laughs> That's you obvious. love me in the show. Uh, it, it's very interesting. Like, I, we've been doing this since January, so it's been on, it's been over half a year now. We're on the 25th episode. This is episode 25, quarter century episode. Um, woo, woo. 
And I've just kind of gotten used to this show as being like, because we record it near the end of the week normally, it's like the capper mm-hmm. on my week. It's the way I can, it's a way for me to look back on my week. It's a bookend. Exactly. And I was surprised at how much I was bummed out at not having that oh, last week. It's because you love talking to me. I do. I love talking. Like I like the rose and the thorn. I don't know if people like that segment, but I love it. That's why we keep doing it because it's like a, it's like a great way of like just like like looking back on your week of mm-hmm. life and yeah. saying, "Look, this is the, this is the things that really happened this to me cake that were was good. Really, really good. Yeah, exactly." Um, but this is the stuff that wasn't so good, like your wife yelling at you about an old cake. Um, and I just, I just like that more than I, like, I missed it. Like I, every time we skip a week for any of the shows we do, I always miss them. Like I always like, it's just. But you missed this one the most. I did. Oh. And, uh, that, so that, I mean, I was a pleasantly surprised thing that I've realized that this is a smaller show. Like I think out of all the shows we do, uh, not as many people listen to this one. It's newer. Um, we're still trying to grow it. People, if you like the show, please share it with your friends. Because you don't like me, guys. No, it's stop it. Stop guilting them. We don't want to do that. Um, but yeah, uh, I like I like doing this so much. I really like doing it, and that's why I'm okay that if it's it's like a smaller listener base and it's just a a handful of people that really really like it. Um, I hope more people like it. But me yeah, too. I missed it. Um, and I mean, to say that means like we're taking off again. A, in a week and I'm kind of bummed about it. Like, but we're going to try something. Yeah. So what, we'll, I guess we'll get there. The, next week we're going to be traveling again. We're going to Denver. And so recording is going to be difficult. We're going to try to do something. We'll talk about it at the end of the show. That's your hook. That's your, dun, hook, dun, dun. your hook to stay towards the end of the show. We are going to try to do something. Uh, we'll see how it works out. But it's my idea. It was, it was a great idea, but I'm the idea person. That wraps up Rose and Thorn. We're only 35 minutes into the podcast. Oh my gosh. All right. So we are going to talk about the movies finally on this movie podcast. That's now half over. Elise. Yeah. What have you, what have you got there? So this is my birthday cookie. It's from Creme de la Cookie. So because Elise got a cake already that she clearly loves more than me, um, we didn't want to get her another cake. For this so we got day. birthday cookies. So we got cookies instead. So we went to Creme de la Cookie and we got some cookies. And this one that I'm holding in my hand right now is the OMG. And it is one of the top 10 cookies according to uh, Travelers. What's an OMG? It's just chocolate chip cookie. Know. No, it's, it's got toffee or something else in it. And I got I one the, with nuts. Can you give me the peanut butter one? Yeah, you don't want any of this one? Mm-mm, I want that peanut butter. I'm going to have a bite of the peanut butter. Mmm, oh. good peanut butter. Man, I hope they give us money for this. They're not going to. No. Are you, sure you don't want to buy this one? It's a, it's a good cookie. Mm-hmm. Young All right. cookies. We'll be right back after these messages. Wait, these are the, these are the me- We'll be right back. That we watched this week, Scott. What was it, Elise? It was Romancing the Stone, 1984's movie, written by Diane Thomas, directed by none other than Robert Zemeckis, who was known for Back to the Future. Has Michael Douglas in it and Kathleen Turner. And Kathleen Turner is a n- mousy novelist who sets off for Columbia to ransom her kidnapped sister. And soon finds herself in the middle of a dangerous adventure, hunting for treasure with a mercenary rogue 
only to be saved by none other than, of course, Michael Douglas. Well, he's the mercenary rogue. Yeah. <laughs> She's saved by him. Um, okay, Elise. Yeah. Romancing the Stone. Yeah. Talk to me about this movie. Why so, did you pick it? Um, this is one of those movies that I don't know why we watched it when we were little, but we did watch it when we were little. And my sister, Adrian and I really liked this movie. I think it's where Adrian actually got her love for cats. It was Kathleen Turner's cat from the beginning of the movie. Wow. Um, and then we just like, I don't know why we left this movie so much. We just did. I think it might've been part of the like sisterhood thing about how it was one sister trying to save the other and <laughs> we were sisters and we just thought Michael Douglas was the cutest little thing. Um, <laughs> the alligators did kind of scare me when I was little. Oh, no. They were those snappers. They're just those pretty little snappers. I mean, you know, watching it back and realizing that I saw this when I was little, there were some pretty risque things that, you know, oh my I was kind of surprised about for, you know, considering my sheltered childhood. So the, let's talk about that because yeah. the movie opens. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's a romance novelist. So anything that you think about staple romance novels was shown, right? Pretty mm -hmm. much in the beginning. Yeah. Yeah, the movie opens on a scene. Like, we, we, we enter the movie, um, and it's later revealed this is all in our author's mind as she's creating the scene from the book she's writing. Mm -hmm. But it is a woman in a Western romance, and she is um, about to be raped, basically, by this guy. But when you're, like, seven, you don't realize okay. that. Yeah, but... You know, and then you watch it later, and you're like, oh, my gosh, I didn't realize that She's wearing this, like, super low-cut shirt. We didn't think anything and, like, of it when we were her, little. Basically, her entire boob. Like, you could see, was that was it? Joan could Wilder you? playing? Like, I mean, you couldn't see nip. There was no nip, hmm. but there was major boobage going on there. Again, um, when you're little, was that, you don't realize. Was that Kathleen Turner playing that character in the thing, or was it someone else? I think I, it was I, someone else. It didn't look like Kathleen Turner. I think it was um, someone else. Yeah, uh, that was. Sh it was a shocking way to start the movie, and I was like, like this was a at least kid movie but then the rest of the movie is like very adventure tame. fun yeah. like yeah um it's basically like a not as good indiana jones basically yeah i can see that yeah so okay so you watched as a kid that's why you liked it um mm -hmm. i didn't like this movie very much and like i think i think this is is a perfect example of how powerful nostalgia is because i'm coming at this as a fully formed adult who really likes movies in the genre and I don't think this is a very good one. Um, I like, I, I like the people in it. Like Michael Douglas is great uh, as an, as a person and an actor. Um, I think his character in this is kind of weak. Like I feel like after star Wars, like everyone writes Han Solo characters in all their movies. And that's basically what he is. He's like the guy who you're not like, he's the rogue that you're not sure if you can trust him or not. And, and yet like, I almost don't want to like ding the movie for that because like what this don't movie put him in a box. Well, but what this movie is 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 taking like a romance novel and just putting it on the screen. Like yeah. this is and I think it's, that's it's kind of like is. a yeah, it's kind of like a meta it's analysis. A like this is a, a romance author um living out living one out of her stories one of her books and basically. then going yeah. to be able to take that and then write it later. Yeah. 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 Um which is a fun little thing. Um it is. yeah, I it's funny that like I, I hear this title romancing the stone and I was like trying like before we watched this movie I was like sitting down what does that mean what does it mean and, and then Danny DeVito just, just does it it's just, just Danny DeVito just explaining the title to you at least He's I didn't try and to, romance the stone away from her but he wasn't doing that he wasn't I mean or maybe he was he was look we can't tell Michael Douglas, I'll but this trust was you. Quite the Michael I'll Douglas you, week. We Michael. saw Ant Man, I know. and then you know what? He didn't look like he aged at all. <laughs> it was the yes, exact same guy from *Romancing the Stone*. I will this say one. that the, seeing this movie right after seeing Ant Man the Wasp shows mm -hmm. once again how good Marvel de-aging technology is. Because in Ant Man and the Wasp, 
Michael Douglas and Michelle Pfeiffer looked phenomenal. And then I saw. Oh, yeah. I mean, all that they did for this was they took his romancing the stone face and they just put it right over. Yeah, they just pasted it. Just uh-huh. like a control, they said, what control should we, C, control where V. Where was he handsomest? Ah, yes. Romancing, romancing the stone. The he stone. was the heartthrob. So, Elise, uh, mm-hmm. I learned something interesting when researching this movie for the podcast. You did? What'd you learn? Yeah. So, um, we normally, as we're like putting together stuff for the thing, I like to pull the writer and the director. Um, and then I like to check what else they've done. Just like to, to read see all the trivia. I like to read that all the you trivia. You like to read all the trivia. IMDb.com I, trivia. I, I just like to see, you know, what other stuff they've done so I can pull that out. Like I, I saw Robert Zemeckis and I, I know what Robert Zemeckis has done, but I saw this woman named Diane Thomas and uh, I didn't recognize that name. So you I have lo- glitter in your beard. Oh, I'm sorry. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, I didn't recognize that name, so I went and saw what else she's done, and this is her only writing credit. She has this, and then she has a character's by credit on the sequel to this movie, which mm. is Jewel of the Nile, I mm. think. Yeah, it's um, not good. Yeah. No good. Um, so I was like, huh, that's interesting. And I looked into why this was, and it, it looks like uh, Diane Thomas wrote this movie and then uh, then passed away. Not too long after that, uh, she was in a car accident. She was in a car driven by her boyfriend who was drunk and ran the car off the road and she died. Um, but uh, it's never interesting. let your boyfriend drive your car. Exactly. Lesson it, learned. It's interesting because um, this car was given to her by the producer of this movie, who was Michael, Michael Douglas. Douglas. Yeah. So uh, the legend, I guess the story, I, I, I haven't seen it like confirmed officially, like both parties confirmed that this was the real story, but the legend was she, uh, she was a UCLA grad. So she graduated mm-hmm. from UCLA film school, uh, moved to LA. Well, she's in LA, moved out of school. Um, Stayed in LA yeah. trying to make it. Got a job at a cafe as a restaurant, uh, as, as a waitress, like graduates yeah, do. Like most people trying to break into film la, la end land. up being waitresses or waiters. Um, so she's working on screenplays and someone came into her cafe and she pitched them a screenplay. And that person was Michael Douglas. And the screenplay was this romancing the stone. And uh, I guess he liked what he heard because he became a producer on the on the movie. He basically set her up and uh, she got this movie made. And, you know, and then he I, gave her that's this car that killed her. I think this shows what a good guy Michael Douglas is. Michael Douglas is a really you good know, guy. Michael Douglas one? has had a tough go of it. He had cancer for a very long time. Yeah. And he's cancer free now. And he's looking pretty good Married for an old Catherine man. Married to Catherine Zeta-Jones. Yeah. Yeah. Well done, sir. So someone tells him an idea instead of ripping it off. He lets them have it. Number I don't two. I think you should get brownie points for not stealing. I, I think like. I mean, I think you should in this industry. <laughs> I, think, I feel like I feel like not stealing is the bare minimum. Mm, I think you should get some points. Then he also gives her a car. And after she dies, he gives her some credit for the next sequel. Well, I think they had to do Man, that. I think that's a, that that's Michael a, Douglas, a, a Screen Actors Guild or a Writing Guild requirement. And you know what? He's ageless. He's not ageless. He is. He's ageless. We've already talked about that. I know. All right. So I, I think the thing that bums me out the most about all this is yeah. as much as I didn't like this movie, um, I think there's real potential in it. I mean, it's like it's almost a meta commentary on uh, romance, romance novels. novels. And and I think it's really sad that a person like uh, Diane Thomas, who was clearly mm-hmm. talented enough to get a movie made, which you know, most screenwriters don't get movies made, um, yeah. then lost her life. And we never got to see where she could have gone with it. I think I think there's real like I didn't like the script. I, I think it's, you know, it's like a bad Indiana Jones. But there's little moments here that I think work really well um, that it would have liked to, to it would have been good to see what kind of writer this woman would have become later in her life. And obviously we never get to see that. And that's a it's a bummer. It's a bummer. But uh, his boyfriend. Yeah. Romancing the stone. That yeah. it was romanced, that stone. It was. It was romanced. That stone was romanced out. I can't remember. Full disclosure, everyone, we've had to uh, do this part twice because I that something went wrong. So I don't remember if we told the story about our stone before it was deleted. So I'm gonna t- we're gonna do it again, and then I'll I'll take it out if you've already done it. Okay. So, Elise. Yeah. Would you like me to romance a stone? You did romance you? the stone. What stone did I romance? You romanced 
my engagement ring. Oh, hey, we're getting back to the whole marriage thing. That's good. Yeah. We we did it. Yeah, yeah. You I did. romanced a good I stone. I romanced the shit out you of that did. stone. You did. It was I a good it. stone. Oh, it's a so beauty. Good. Yeah, I like rose you, gold. You tell me all the time. Uh, I do because I, I still look at it. See, the nice thing <laughs> is that the diamond it like sparkles really pretty because it's with rose gold, which I think brings out these undertones that I like a lot more that mm-hmm. are like. More of like blue and purple as opposed to like if it was with platinum or a silverish, I guess, metal to where it would be more like yellowy tones. And so it's just, oh, it's so pretty. You did so good. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I don't want to toot my own Oh, horn. you toot toot. Um, toot toot. I think uh, this is not something I, I, buying diamonds is obviously not something I know a lot about. Um, oh, come, come now. <laughs> I'm sure you researched. But it sounds it sounds cliche, but I went to the store. The lady took out a ring. I said, yes, absolutely. Um, and the heavens and the opened one. up. Yeah. I mean, a it's light like, shone down and the angels went, oh. It's, like it's, it's, done, it's done in movies and TV so many times, but that's what happened. I mean, like, like this is the, and then I said, yeah, that's perfect, but you got to put a bigger, bigger rock in that thing. And then and I they spent, did. And then I spent all my money and now we're broke. No, we're not broke. Um, but no, it was it was it was one of those moments. Like it it was the ring. It was two toned. I know I knew you liked that idea. It was um, two toned, and it's that's the stone I romanced. Look, we talked about marriage on our marriage podcast. We did Way good. To go, us. Pat's did on the good. back. So that's uh, romancing the stone. Mm-hmm. Um, Elise, yeah. Let's move on to movie number numero two. two. Okay, so movie number two is a High School Musical. Came out in two thousand six. It was written and directed by Kenny Ortega. Um, And so if you'll just scroll down, Scott, so they can see what else Kenny Ortega did. That would be perfect. Nothing? Nothing. No, he's done some other stuff. Maybe it's just Disney Channel stuff. Um, But no, he has. So Zac Efron is in this movie. Vanessa Hudgens, Corbin Blue, and Ashley Tisdale. Ashley Tisdale was like huge in the Disney Channel world at this time because it was uh, Sweet Life of Zack and Cody, which, you know, Riverdale now has one of those two on it. So like they're big people too. Um, But so this movie is about a jock who plays basketball who over New Year's Eve meets this like girl that he sings karaoke with and they hit it off and then she just so happens to join the school and then... They're both thinking about trying out for this musicale, but um, why did you say it that you way? Know, <laughs> it's just it's totally against what their stereotype is, and so they just they can't break free of the stereotype. Okay, so. so let's rewind a bit because I think we're jumping into this movie, and I think we need to set the stage a little bit. Okay, let's here. set the stage. Um, set the stage to s- engage. Uh, what? It's a teacher thing. So Disney Channel original movies. Yeah. This is a thing. This is this was It a, is, it's a thing. Is it still a thing? I don't know if it's as big of a thing as it was. It was a big thing in the two thousands. It was. Um, it was huge. This was it was like, huge. I was fifteen starting in the year two thousand, so I, mm-hmm. I had already kind of aged out of this whole thing. Disney Channel really wasn't my thing anymore. Mm-hmm. Um my little sister watched it a lot, so yeah. I, I, I've seen some of these like through osmosis or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, but the only the only Disney Channel original movie I watched was the Even Stevens movie. Um, Good movie, and that's just because I I thought that television show was hilarious because it has Shia LaBeouf in it, and even back then I could recognize the genius, the uh, genius, such a scout that is for Shia talent LaBeouf. you are. Um, and so I watched that movie. It was fine. Um, but yeah, I, I, I missed the boat on these things. I was mm-hmm. too, the boat is said, said six years mm-hmm. and under to get on That's the okay. boat. And they said, sir, you're almost an adult. Mm-hmm. You cannot, you can't. Um, so yeah, I didn't watch any of these things. So, but you, on the other hand, okay. you're four years so, younger than me. So I think it was probably like, honestly, sweet spot for you, right? Like it, was, it was. Cause I was towards the like end of maybe their target audience for it but a lot of their movies you know their characters are teenagers and so while i'm you know nearing the middle school ish age for it i also still am kind of around the age that the characters in the movies are and so it while 
maybe was phasing out for me still hooked me for a bit because I was like, oh my gosh, Riley Smith and motocross. I have this big crush on him. And so I'm definitely going to watch the motorcycle movie so that I can see him on a motorcycle because he's such a hunk. Um, and then there was like, I can't even think of his name right now. That was in Brink. That was also the cu- the guy in The Princess Diaries. The weird thing is I recognize the names of all these um, movies, but I d- don't know anything about them. I just recognize It's a skateboard the movie. And I'm, I had this thing for, you know, skaters. skaters. So, Skater boy. Um, she Did said, you say, see you later, see boy. See you later, boy. Uh-huh. Just not good. Man, we're cool. For her. We're cool. She had a pretty face. Okay. But her head was up in space. Okay. Needed to come back down to earth. That's a better song than literally every bum, single bum, song bum. on this movie we're talking about. Um, no. Anyways, so I had like, I think I was probably watching the Disney Channel during their like prime original movies because even when we were looking on the tv for their on-demand movies most of the ones that they have that are like the ones that they advertise as these are our disney channel original movies were ones that came out whenever i was little so i think the fact that they're still kind of hanging on to those lets them Mm -hmm. know that that was their like sweet spot you know and so i watched those then and then as i got older they like had this gap of movies that were just awful and I don't think they were just getting a lot of people to watch it. I don't know. What Maybe if I told you because... that there's a high probability that all of these movies are awful? I, I don't think that you've seen all of them. So that's, I don't think that you true. can judge. Um, but anyways, so it was like there there's that time where they just they had lost their luster. And then then in 2006, <laughs> Zac Efron And Vanessa Hudgens came together to star in High School (gasps) Musical. Now, question. Yes. Is this the biggest Disney Channel original movie? I think that this probably is because they have... Because the third movie was a theater release, right? Yeah. And I don't think that's ever happened. I don't think it has come out of any of their original Hannah Montana. Uh, Did that come out in the theaters? I don't... I don't don't know if it did. I think so. I think it did. I don't remember if it did. And I wasn't in the Hannah Montana. So the Lizzie days. McGuire stuff was never this that big. Oh, I loved Lizzie McGuire. That's Disney, right? That is Disney. Yes, it is. Have you seen? There's like a uh, a you horror... know Cadet Kelly is on the on demand. I don't I loved Cadet I Kelly. Don't know what that is? That had Lizzie McGuire. Sure. And uh, that's not the... her real name, you know. No, Hillary Duff. <laughs> yeah. Hillary Duff. And what's the even Stevens sister? Kim Possible. Christy Carlson Romano. Christy Carlson Romano and Hillary Duff. Oh my gosh. So so good. D- there's there. A horror story. Um, mm-hmm. You know, th- they had those Disney Channel promos where the 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 stars would say like "Welcome to Disney Channel" and then like draw oh, the mouse yeah. ears. You're talking I think about I showed this, you. I think, I, think yeah. I showed it to you. There's like this this clip of poor young, like probably 13 years old Hillary Duff mm-hmm. having to shoot these promos and just having to say, "You're watching Disney Channel," over. And over and doing yeah. the mouse ear drawing over. And you're just like, you feel so bad for this kid. Yeah. I mean, this poor kid is like hours and hours and hours and hours. I can't but imagine. But you know what? She got paid. She did. I mean, of course she got paid. She got paid. And now she's on a new show. So, OK, let's and go now back. She's married let's, with children. Let's go back to yeah. the movie. At okay. Hand. Let's so stop High School Musical came out in 2006. And I was a Zac Efron fan before this movie because he was on Summerland. What is that? Summerland was a show that came out on, I think it was uh, the CW or UPN or whatever 33 was, local channel. Okay. And it had Lori Laughlin. Okay. And it had Ryan something that was also in True Blood. And it was like two seasons. And this was the very first thing that like Zac Efron was in. He still had his really big gap in between his teeth. Like I think he has it in this. You just it's don't get very, to see very it. subtle. Well, here, here's the yeah. pro- here's the problem with seeing any detail in this movie is the version is of this we movie we saw was really standard bad. definition yeah. on a 55 inch television, and it just looked really bad. Yeah, it was it looked bad. really bad. But anyway, so I'd really liked him from that, and so the fact that he was in this, I was like, oh my gosh, it's the Summerland kid. <laughs> I was so excited because I was like, you know what? He was cute in Summerland, and he's cute here too. And you know what? I don't care. I'm 16 years old and this came out on Disney Channel. Yeah. I'm going to watch this movie because yeah. he's the same age as I am. So it was like, you know what? 
Whatever. I'll watch it. I don't watch think it. you were the only one that did that because obviously wasn't. this got very popular. It did. Two sequels, one of which um, in theaters, which is insane. Um, Elise. Yeah. <laughs> so I didn't, I'm not finished yet. The reason that I watched this movie in the first place, I did not watch it when said it first that. came out. Well, I liked Zach Efron, but no. My best friend in high school, she liked the Disney Channel more than I did, and she was a year older than me. <laughs> I'm and shaking my head got, right now. She got the soundtrack and she was playing it before me. And I was like, oh, my gosh, these songs are so much fun. Now, Vanessa Hudgens, I will admit, it's not the best vocal. And Zac Efron, he's come a long way since his high school musical days. But I was like, these songs, these songs are catchy. These songs are pretty catchy. I, I, and so, you know what? I watched the movie. I, not only did I watch the movie, Scott. Disney Channel did a couple special screenings of this oh movie God. to where they would have sing-alongs and in the commercials, they would teach you the dances to some of the songs. <laughs> I might have learned a few. <laughs> it was brilliant. But here, here's the shocking thing to me is you watch musicals. Yeah. Like all the... like. I do. There's a very real possibility that for most of the target audience and most of the people that watched this film yeah. this was their first movie musical yeah. and in that sense i understand and there had why been musicals in a long time I and understand. then then one came and it had summerland's zach Efron. but to hear you talk about the music in this movie as if it is good i mean it's not the best it's terrible it's we're so in Flying. There's not a star in heaven that we can't reach. truth about most of these disney channel movies none of the actors are good like at all like oh my gosh vanessa Hudgens was awful in this but she was terrible think about her from this to spring breakers and think about zach efron from this and now in baywatch well, okay. i mean they've come he's, so far he's, like his his body has turned into like a freakishly I muscly i don't even like, think that his voice had actually changed in this movie <laughs> like you listen back to it and you're like oh but all the acting is terrible like all these people like oh yeah and these people are a lot of them are famous actors yeah, now no. and they're just they're just, they're just bad they're it just, just really, shows they're you just really how bad. powerful disney is and then ryan gosling i think justin timberlake carrie russell i think uh i think disney channel original movie and mickey mouse club are two very different things christina aguilera i yeah, mean i mean hey. mickey mouse club cultivated talent disney channel original movies i i, I don't know they're shia they're, labeouf yeah i mean like shia a, a broken clock is wrong twice a day. Like you're gonna mm, find some good actors out of I it. I think but I've named quite a few. Now, have anyone Oscars? Not yet. Everyone you named was a Mickey Mouse Club person. Uh, no, I named Shia LaBeouf. Yeah, besides Shia LaBeouf, I named Zac Efron. I don't think Zac Efron's a good actor. I think he's better now than he was in this movie. But I don't think Zac Efron is like as a lot of deep range uh, and is like generating a lot of pathos in his performances. Have you seen Neighbors? Yes, I have. It's I, a very funny movie. I think it is brilliant. Yeah, because he's basically playing himself. I don't blame him. <laughs> um, but the basketball song was the moment oh, that I knew. It. Get you, get your head in the game.
and said, what were these songs written by children? Because like some of the lyrics in the song are like things they that kids not, would put together. Not written by children, written for children. It's awful. Written for me. It's awful. And you have, I love you were You were lucky enough to have parents that exposed you to more movie musicals than I've seen in my life so far. Yes. And yet, and yet you look at this movie and decide, hey, I could be listening to hundreds of quality music, movie musicals, but I'm going to enjoy high school musical again it's, and again uh, here here's um mm -hmm. we're on episode 25 yeah so that means mm -hmm. i've watched at least 25 of your movies um this is the worst one you've made me watch by far really by far i think that it's not the worst this is the worst thoroughly modern millie thoroughly modern millie is an Oscar award-winning movie compared to this. Mm. This was so bad. Like it's so good. And here's the thing about this Guys, movie. Guys, you should watch High School here's Musical. Here's the thing about this movie. Who cares what Scott says? movie like i think it kills your brain a little bit because <laughs> the first 20 minutes i was dying and then at some point near the end of it you're like i did it did the movie get better no yeah. no the movie yeah. the movie didn't get better it just wore you down and you live in a world in which high school musical is the only thing and in that world when you have nothing to compare to, it seems good, but it's not. Oh, it was great. It's not. I think it was it's great. It's a bad movie, Elise. I'm, I'm, have you seen the sequels? I think I've seen the second one, but I never saw the third one. You never one. saw the theater one? No, I the didn't. The one that probably has decent production value? Probably. Yeah, no, I haven't probably. ever seen that one. But you know what? High School Musical 2, that's on demand. I'm, and 3 is I, on Netflix. So, you know, I think we know what we're going to watch tonight, guys. No, see, the whole thing about the show is uh, you make me watch these things. And then if it's not for the show, I don't have to do you it. You know what we're going to do is I'm going to download High School Musical 2 or 3 on Netflix on my iPad and then in the car on our road trip. I will Diane, watch I will Diane Thomas you so fast. We're going to watch I it. will crash that car Well, then so you're going to crash your new car? Yeah. Whoa. That's how bad this is. Wow. That's how bad this is. I don't think it's that bad, but right. it's pretty catchy. Elise, uh, that's it for High School Musical. I don't want to talk about this for movie. For High School anymore. Musical. Okay. Yeah, the stupid, like, <laughs> I hate these, like, I understand they're trying to be broad and, like, appeal to kids, but the stupid drama teacher is, like, the musical. The thing that I don't understand about, about movies that write. Uh, drama theater obsessed people like this is they are those people why are they making fun of themselves why is she pronouncing musical like that it just pisses me off Elise. yes what are we doing next week okay so we have an idea okay first of all we are starting a road trip to colorado on sunday and so we're not going to have our regularly recorded show yeah we just have none of the equipment we're, we're not bringing yeah, the equipment with we're us. not bringing it with us and i think it's gonna be really hard for us to actually like pick movies and watch them and and do yep. all of that jazz yep, considering yep, yep. we're just gonna have so much fun on the trip we just don't have time to watch movies because uh. we're gonna be reading in the car scott's gonna be driving um so what we thought we would do is just bring a little recording device and just have an are we there yet little tiny recording of us in the car because yeah. why not and I, I then i don't know what that means and are we there yet are we there yet are we there yet 
Are we there? We're just going to we're just going to record some of our uh, car conversations and we don't know if this is going to work like we could listen back to the audio and think and it could be awful. It sounds really bad because yeah, it's, like, it's going to be loud that in was the, the car. Thing, yeah. is I was like, Scott, I know you're not going to like the audio quality. I know I'm already because I know you're really picky about it. But here's an idea. I'm just going to throw it out there. And, and he, I, and I don't know he when, didn't like it at first. But I don't know when I'm going to edit this. And like that, that all stuff, I, we haven't worked out. So it may just be out. a segment in the following week. And the sure. following week, what we're going to be doing is road trip movies. That because makes that's what we sense. did. Yeah. And so we're going to do movies that center around some sort of road trip. Right. Main characters in the cars doing something. So, um, the movie that I chose, I actually had not realized that you had never seen it. This is embarrassing for me. I honestly had, whenever I saw, I forget if it was like a preview or something that we were watching. We were at, uh, we were at Draft Draft House? House. We were somewhere and like a little clip of it came on. No, we were watching that music thing last night on the YouTube. Oh, the music now. Yeah. Oh, yeah, the Cinefix, Cinefix. the Finna Cinefix YouTube Cinefix channel. Thing. Yeah. And I was like, oh, there are these four movies that now I need to watch because of this. And this was one of them. It was the, the Blues Brothers. I with have Dan never Aykroyd seen Blues Brothers. That's really embarrassing. Belushi. Yeah. Which Belushi brother? The uh, one that died. John. No. John. Not the one in Curly Sue. Correct. Yeah, the other Belushi. Yeah. Um, If my dad did not like What About Bob is his movie, this would have been the second <laughs> one. Um, he would always say that we're on a mission from God. So, so those that's Illinois your, Nazis. That's your pick is Blues yeah, Brothers, Blues the Brothers. original Blues the Brothers. Original Blues Brothers. Uh, I'm finally going to cross this off my list. I've been meaning to watch this movie forever. I was forever. so surprised you hadn't had ever seen it. Um, I had a tough time with this because I was like, when I think road trip, I think kind of, I don't think serious movies. Like I could have picked Easy Rider. That's a very serious movie that uh, um, I could have picked. But I think like fun, like comedy type movies. Yeah. So the first two that popped into my head were the movie Road Trip, um, which was a movie I watched. Like it's a college, it's dumb which college slacker seen. movie. Um, I decided not to do that, though, because you have never seen the Chris Farley movie Tommy Boy. Uh, mm. which is kind of crazy to me, which is a movie I watched all the time as a kid. I thought it was hilarious. Like all my friends, like David Spade and, and Chris Farley, like we thought it was the funniest movie. Um, I did have a friend that liked this movie a lot. Yeah. And he so, would always so try that's, to get me to so, watch it. Uh, our road trip movies are Blues Brothers from Elise and me making you watch Tommy Boy, which you've never seen. So we're, we're, we're closing we're some gaps. We're finally doing the, yeah, we're doing again, good. Back to we're the, doing good. the other one's never seen it. All right. That is all we have time for this week. If you like this podcast and want to help support it, you can head on over to patreon.com slash daily planet films and donate a dollar a month or whatever else you can afford each and every cent. Each and every cent you provide helps us fund the show, helps us see the movies for this, because a lot of these movies we have to rent on Amazon and it it adds up. Another thing, Mm -hmm. it is not on the Patreon Mm-hmm. But if you would like to donate a milk bar birthday cake. Oh, yes. Yes. I will always take those. Okay. Um, Let me know if you need the P.O. Box. Okay. We Do don't we have, have a, a P.O. We box? don't have so a P.O. Box. We should get a P.O. Box so okay. people can send me cake. Okay. Um, yeah. So consider donating to our Patreon. And if you are listening on Apple Music, uh, head on over there and leave us a rating and review because Apple podcast reviews really help. It gets people to see it. Like we said, this is, a, we have a small audience here. It's growing. It is growing. The, the chart is, is going up, but, uh, is it going to be Pike's I peak. Would, I would like it to be a little faster Mount Everest. and I would like more. I, I think this is a fun show. I think the people that listen to it, enjoy it. So share it, review it, rate it, do all those great things. And thanks for your support. Loyal audience. Elise it's appreciates Mike's it. Super short show. I don't what? It's the Disney Channel. Okay. Guys, he's <laughs> so old. All right, guys. We will talk to you all, if not next week, then the week after. Yeah. Probably the week after, more realistically. But uh we're gonna enjoy our vacation and we hope you guys we enjoy are. your July. And Elise? Yeah. Happy birthday. Thank you. You made it special. I love you. I love you too. Bye bye. Bye bye. Happy birthday. You haven't sung it to me yet. To you. Mm-hmm. Happy birthday. To you. Happy birthday, dear Midge. Happy birthday. 
to you. Can I sing our song that we did on Drill Team? What? Can I sing our happy birthday song for I Drill just Team? sang happy birthday to you, and your first response is, it's my turn to sing now. I liked your version. That's rude. I liked your version. Can I sing my version? You may. <gasps> happy, happy birthday. Oh, I got to clap. Happy, happy birthday. Today's your special day. Happy, happy birthday. That's what we're here to say. Woo! Happy, happy birthday. May all your dreams come true. Happy, happy birthday from Stinger at Sea. Woo! Wow. Or whenever I changed it, I would always say, happy, happy birthday from Elise to you. Woo! Oh, so it's personalized. Yeah. 